What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to DVD's Nuts and Popcorn. I am your host, the PWM, the Physical Media Mac, and I am back once again with some double tree hunting, some goodwill hunting, and also. Some Amazon Prime purchases, or actually I should say eBay purchases. Let me see if I got all that correct. Also a couple half price books pickups. And yeah, I think the rest of it's Goodwill stuff. So, the Astro start at four o'clock, it's three o'clock now, so I'm gonna try and make this video a 30 minute video then I gotta run to the grocery store, grab some preparation, some Astro preparation beverages. Starbucks has a line 20 deep, the drive-thru, which I always go through. So I'm like, nah, F that. I go inside the, the Starbucks, and it probably takes me 20 minutes to get one Ice coffee. I was pissed. All right, let's get started here. Let's get started with the Dollar Tree stuff. Sorry, I'm very disorganized today. Let's see if I can pull it together in the moment of truth here. I don't feel like I can't see for shit. Okay, that's another one. And that's another one. I think that was it. Pretty few and far between the dollar buck 25 bush. And I gotta say, I gotta say that this month has been pretty underwhelming at buck 25 bush. I don't know what you guys think. It's October, the month of Halloween. And, you know, uh, this is my second video. I guess I'm going to call this a Dollar Tree video. I don't know. It's a combination of all things that are great. Well, I shouldn't say all things that are great. It's a combination of a bunch of places that we go to shop and hunt for video for movies. Dollar Tree hasn't been that great. It's been okay in October. You expect it to be pretty incredible, at least in October. Can you do it one month out of the year, buck 25 bush? All right, so first off, I was kind of happy to see get this. I mean, I've, I've never seen the movie before, and I always see people find it at Dollar Tree, but it's kind of weird to me because it, it looked like it was a reseal job. And the reason why I say that is that the, the seal looked kind of weird, and it's got these, I don't know if you can see it if it'll pick up, these wavy camera lines. And why is this person over here looking at me for? Fucking weirdo. I got some guy like, literally like a vehicle is like just parked over there just staring. You just gonna keep staring or what? I don't put my camera, I aim my camera at him. You see him? You see him? You see him? This guy. Yeah, pull off. You friggin' idiot. Oh, my bad. He's handicapped. I think that was a woman, too. All right, I'm losing my shit. I don't like people... Uh, you know, invade my space. And, like, this car, like, literally, like, it's... They had no business, like, just staring. All right, forget about it. All right, so, yeah, so this case is, like, it's got some waviness to it. And that's no big deal. You know, these, these, I can switch it with another, and I will switch it with another, another case. But, yeah, I finally found the boy. I thought that was kind of weird. Is, do, is Buck 25 Bush resealing movies now? Is that what it's come to? I think I've heard decent stuff about this movie. Why does that look weird? I 
What is going on? Okay, maybe it's too... I'm really losing it. I thought the artwork was too short. But yeah, I heard good things about this. All right, I need to hurry up. Next up, I told you guys I was collecting all the Cursed 2000 Steven Seagal films. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, guys, but this is back when I thought I could do it. And I grabbed Attrition. And this looks about as horrible as Steven Seagal Curse 2000 films can possibly get. He literally looks like a laughable joke of a human being on the cover. Look at this movie he's trying to do back here. What the hell he's doing? Two lives, one game. That's going to be terrible. I just know it. And I would say this is probably, hopefully I'm not forgetting something. I would probably have to say this is probably the find of the month at Buck 25 Bush. This is what everybody's going to be looking for. Unless it hit in the past and I didn't know about it, but I've never seen it at my Buck 25 Bush. And I got the feeling this is going to be a hot commodity and everybody's going to be talking about it and picking it up. And that is The Eyes of My Mother, a film by Nicholas Pesk. And uh, I've heard a lot of great things about this. And now I am not going to lie to you. I saw this movie a few years back, but I think I was drunk out of my mind. It's either that or I'm not remembering correctly. And I wasn't drunk, but it was so confusing, the twist ending, that I might as well have been drunk. I didn't get it. Unless I'm confusing this with another movie. And I don't think I am. This is one of those black and white indie type of horror flicks. With subtitles. Is it Japanese? I don't think it is. Korean, maybe? But anyway, yeah, everybody's going to be looking for this. If they drop it at Buck 25 Bush and Blu-ray, people are going to lose their effing minds. But yeah, this is a uh, this is going to be the next biggest thing at Buck 25 Bush. I'm going to check this out again and see if uh, see if I like it or not. It's supposed to be really like, like, look at the quote on the back of this. I kind of like the quote on the back of this by Rolling Stones. A stupid Buck 25 Bush sticker is over it. This is the most maddening sticker of all time. So instead of putting it squarely in the square, they always overlap it as a tactic so you cannot remove the fucking slip cover. But the only problem is with that, you cannot get this sticker off the slip and it ends up damaging the slip cover. Drives me insane. This is actually a little bit embossed, the face here. But yeah, anyway, Rolling Stones say, I can't see the name, but Roll, it, someone from Rolling Stones, right? Stunning, sick as, well, they, they you know, it, they're trying to say sick as fuck, right? They do the, uh, the asterisk. Stunning, sick as fuck. This is what curdled American... No, I'm sorry. Let me try this one more time. Stunning. Sick as fuck. This is what curdled Americana looks like. Then we got a beautiful nightmare from start to finish. Hands down, one of the best horror movies of the year. Alright, so we'll check that out, check that out again. Let me know in the comments below. I got the feeling none of you guys, none of you losers have seen this. I'm pretty certain of that. I'm in a bad mood today. I'm calling you guys losers. Shouldn't be in a bad mood. The fucking Astros are up 2-0 uh, and we're heading to New York. It's my day off. That car really pissed me off. 
All right, now. You know I got love for you guys. Now, I don't love you, but I got love for you guys. I don't want to be like one of those corny YouTubers. I love you guys. All right, now. I don't know where to go with this. Like, this is so, I'm so disorganized. Let me organize things real quick here. Because I can't deal with this. Oh, I'm sorry. I have one more Buck 25 Bush movie. I knew I was going to do that. Just stack these babies right here so they're right next to me so, since we talked about them already we'll throw those in there we're gonna get this organized trust me guys now Psy Lord aka Ty Lord of darkness the one that records videos in pitch black caves the guy who does videos, you know, before, you know, in the Bible where they say on the first day God created, so before the first day, before God created anything, that's where he records his videos, basically. But anyway, he's a big fan of these, um, these deep blue sea movies, and I've never seen any of them. So I saw a buck 25 bush. This is another uh, fairly recent drop. Uh, this is an October drop. I don't think it's been any previous drop. So if you guys want this for a buck twenty-five, go out and check out your uh, your neighborhood um, buck twenty-five weed. But anyway, uh, this is a 2018 film, and I thought it was okay. I mean, it didn't blow me away. Lots of CGI. I mean, Tyler was expressing how great the animatronics was. I mean, I, I guess he was talking about the first one because. There was very little animatronics in this. This is a CGI. I mean, it, CGI wasn't terrible, but it was definitely CGI. And uh, I would say probably the coolest thing about this is the uh, the main shark has babies. And the baby sharks are like fucking piranhas and shit. They're pretty badass. And uh, basically the... Uh, the uh, and I, well, I will say this: the, uh, the I was about to say space station, but the the undersea underwater station is a lot cooler than Jaws fucking 3D. That's stupid, uh, stupid station they had. That was a ridiculously stupid looking station. Yeah, but anyway, um, you know, yeah, I mean, it looked it looked decent, but. Um, yeah, a little piranha sharks are pretty badass, but um, I don't know. They have crazy stories. Like they're, they're trying to get, they're trying to use the sharks to cure cancer, and they're, I, they're trying to do it something similar to that again. But I don't know. It's a pretty dumb. It's a pretty silly story, but it was all right. I don't know what else to say, but I'm not gonna get into the details of the movie. All right, let's go through this one really quick. So you guys know I'm collecting the Masters of Horror, so I found another one at Goodwill. This is a Showtime uh, series that came out. That all these cool directors directed all these different films, and it comes in a, a, a box set that has, like, loose den. It's not a good box set. I prefer to collect every single one of them, and this is, uh, I believe, Joe Dante, right? Yeah, from Gremlins and, and The Howling. It's got Jason Priestley in it, and... From 90210 and Elliot Gould. And it's called the Screwfly Solution. This is written by Sam Ham. Ham. And yeah, it began with a terrifying rash of isolated homicides around the world. Normal male sexual urges suddenly transformed into violent rage. Now a pair of scientists, played by Jason Priestley and Elliot Gould, are in desperate race against time to figure out how and why the war between the sexes has turned murderous uh is a mysterious virus making every red-blooded man a potential lady killer all right interesting checking that out soon i'm actually backlogged on my i stopped watching them i gotta i gotta get better at that i'm getting really backlogged on movies guys like 
I bought the Tales from the Dark Side box set, and I only watched like five episodes. I need to finish that. I need to finish watching these these um, Masters of Horror films. I mean, getting to the point where I'm just like, I need to stop picking up movies and watch what the fuck I have. All right, guys, I had to splice this in. I reached the end of the video, and I realized that I forgot to show off probably one of the better pickups, a eBay purchase that I made, and... Would it really be a PWM video if I didn't talk about a cyborg film or an android film? So we have Night Siege, Project Shadow Chaser 2. Yes, guys. I finally own all four of the Shadow Chaser movies. One of them on, or the first one on DVD on the, um, the Termination Collection, and then... The rest of them, the other three on Laserdisc. These are not easy to find, some of these films, guys. And uh, really happy to pick this one up. And uh, yeah, so I ended up watching on accident. I watched Project Shadow Chaser 3000 first. I couldn't find one until I found it on the Termination Collection. So I went and found, or I bought Alien Chaser, which is product... Shadow Chaser 4, and uh, I watched that one, and then I went and watched one, so I'm all over the place with this, but I watched one most recently, and now I finally watched two, and I enjoyed this. I enjoy the whole entire series. Four, yes, is a little ridiculous. I mean, they all have some ridiculousness to them, but um, four is still pretty damn entertaining in my opinion, and uh, listen, one is about as close as a classic as you're going to get to be science fiction films, in my opinion. So, is this one as good as the first one? No, it's not as good as the first one. Uh, it's missing, uh, you know, Martin Cove is sorely missed. Uh, Meg Foster is sorely missed. And, um, yeah, but I mean, listen, guys, this movie right here, I was like Frank Zagarino in this film is actually scary. Like remember, like the first time you not the uh, the hundredth time you've seen the original Terminator, but like the very first time you watched Terminator and you saw the Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator come out. That motherfucker was terrifying. That's how this guy is right here in this film. In the very beginning, he comes out and he looks scary as fuck, man. And basically, what happens is they. Um, they, they, the, the terror, he's like, a, again, like a lead terrorist, uh, uh, android, and they take over a nuclear, let me just read the synopsis on the back of it, so I don't talk, I don't F this up. When armed terrorists take over a nuclear facility, three unlikely heroes are cast into a brutal battle to save the world in this high-tech sci-fi action thriller, Frank Zagarino of Project Shadow Chaser, Never Say Die. Stars is a superhuman android whose plot to steal a top secret nuclear weapon is threatened by three hostages who refuse to cooperate. It's the ultimate battle of man versus machine as a beautiful scientist and hard hitting engineer join forces in the fight to decide the fate of humanity. Loaded with hard hitting action and high tech special effects. <coughs> Excuse me. It's Die Hard meets the Terminator as this spectacular thriller races to an explosive finish. And oh boy, it is an explosive finish, guys. But yeah, um, I say he's scary, but for some reason, I think this is the only one in the whole franchise, he tries to like crack jokes in this one, which is so off-putting, but at the same time, it's pretty fucking hilarious. So in that first scene when he comes out, with his zag flat top and those killer fucking like contact, I, I guess they're like contacts and shit in his eyes. And he's fucking ripped. And he walks in there and the other terrorists are like shooting up this nuclear, nuclear, nuclear power plant. And then all of a sudden he busts out with his Uzi and he's firing on people. He's killing, they must have killed like a hundred people, including Santa Claus. And then all of the sudden, after everyone's dead in that room, it cuts to him. He's got the Santa Claus fucking hat on his head. And he goes, Merry Christmas. It's like so fucking hilarious. It's funny as shit, man. But it's like, 
What the fuck am I watching, man? Frank Z Frank Zagarino's character is now cracking jokes as the android. It's it's uh, really funny. Now, all right. So I was first witness of Frank Zagarino's greatness in Cyborg Cop Three, which oddly enough has Brian Genese in it, who they're reunited in this film, and uh, he's like he basically replaces. Uh, he doesn't replace the Martin Cove character, but he plays a similar character, right? In all these films, like the Bruce Willis character in uh, Die Hard, like uh, the Oliver uh, Gruner character in Automatic, and uh, so on and so forth, right? And um, so Meg Foster's not in this again, but another beautiful woman, and she actually does a pretty good job. What is her name? I'm going to go on forever about this fucking film. I can already see it. Uh, starring Frank Zagarino, Brian Guinness, and Beth Tosent. Uh, Tosent. Tosent. Beth Tosent, I think is how you say it. Now, this is directed by John Aries. And I was a little bit unfamiliar with his filmography. Now, he directed the first three Shadow Chaser films, all right? So this is his baby, guys. And, um... But I was unfamiliar with anything else that he's done. And when I went on IMDb, I was surprised to see, it says on IMDb that that uh, he is known for the movies Monolith, which by the way has Martin Cove in it, which I need to seek that film out. Martin Cove, I think, is a real underrated, overlooked action guy from the 80s that I really need to uh, check out his disc discography, his filmography. And um, so Monolith, a movie called Judge and Jury, which sounds like a fucking ripoff of the, uh, was it was it the Wes Craven movie where the guy, Shocker? It sounds, if you read the synopsis, it's exactly like Shocker. And another film that I've seen with a, uh, not Lou Ferrigno, another like a wrestler or something like there's been like a bunch of movies of the same plot but anyway um judge and jury and then like a 2016 film called miss sloan so i don't know if they just threw that in there to, to let let people know that he's still relevant but i definitely need to check out monolith and judge and jury and um but yeah guys again man it's more of the same from the first film they're just not in this office building anymore. Now they're in a nuclear power plant, which obviously is more dangerous and more crazy, insane action. There's more explosives in this. There's more fucking guns firing. There's more people dying. It's uh, really fucking over the top. And what's so hilarious about this film, at the end of the film, the same shit they did in fucking uh, the first film where Martin Cove is hanging off the helicopter. They basically redid that shit with Brian Genese's character trying to get into the helicopter, climb up the fucking la the, uh, the rope ladder, and the, they think they killed off Zagarino, but he's still alive. And he's at the bottom of the ladder climbing up, and fucking him and Brian Genese are fighting on the ladder, and behind them are exp uh, more explosions than the first one, fiery skies, and it's like, it's so fucking great. And um, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, Brian Ganese, like, he's, like, he's really an off-putting actor. Like, it's so hilarious. Like, in Cyborg Cop 3, he's literally pounding fucking 12-ounce Budweiser's the whole fucking movie. And in this movie, the first, uh, at least the first half of the movie, he's pounding this flask of liquor and then, like, when shit gets hairy, and they, and, uh, because he's an engineer at the power plant, who basically gets fired by this hot chick, uh, the Beth character, and, uh, but, but he gets fired for sexually harassing her, but yet gets to work the rest of the day, which is crazy, and, uh, he, like, gets shot up by the, uh, the terrorist, but the flask saves his life and has bullet holes in the flask, but they hit him with, like, 50 shots, there's no way, but anyway, uh, it's just a movie, right? But he finds, like, a liquor bottle somewhere, and now he's trying to drink liquor during the movie. He's, like, a total drunk in every movie that he's in. But his acting ability kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. He's not a great actor. And uh, 
He's just, he's kind of an awkward actor. It's kind of hard to, to describe. You would think he'd be like this perfect uh, ex-football player. Or ex I think in this movie, he's like, he says he's a a minor league baseball player. Like, you know, a jock character. But he's just like, a, he just, his acting is weird. It's kind of hard to explain. But um, but I, th I found this highly enjoyable, man. I say check this one out, man. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of the uh, of pretty much every Shadow Chaser movie. It's one of my favorite franchises with an Android for sure. I'm going to have to say Frank Zagarino might be the second greatest uh, Android cyborg. You know, let's include cyborgs and androids together. I have to put him right behind Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's that fucking good, man. All right. Back to the original video. All right. All right. I, I picked this movie up for... Uh, for somebody who wants it, man, I, you know, I, I can't rave enough about this film. This is the, uh, the foreign version, which is the better version. Remember the American version is let me in, which is not a bad version. It's a, it's a good, it's also a good, uh, movie, but this is the better one. And that's let the right one in. And, um, you know, uh, I always have problems saying his name. Guy Guillermo Guillermo del Toro, I think I said it right, says it's a chilling fairy tale. And it really is like a fairy tale. It's so beautiful. As delicate, haunting, and poetic a film as you're ever bound to see. Pretty strong words by uh, del Toro. And um, let me see. I thought there was a, there was a real, it's not on this edition, but there was a really great, comment by Stephen King about this movie, which should be on every one of the covers. Saying it was like one of the best horror movies in like a decade or 20 years or something crazy. Best vampire movie ever. Washington Examiner. It's a phenomenal film. So, But just remember, if you ever get the foreign version, you're going to have to read dialogue. You're going to have to read the... Uh, what, what the hell is it called? You're going to have to read the... Uh, clo the clo not cl is it closed captioned? You're going to have to read dialogue. Let me just put you that way. And, um, which I don't mind doing. For a movie like this that's this incredible, I have no problem at all doing it. But never watch the dubbed version. The dubbed version, I believe, is on this as well. I'm pretty sure it is. Do not watch the dubbed version of this if it's on here. It might not be on this edition, but be careful of that. Because the dubbed version just sucks. You might think to yourself, oh, I want to hear it. I want to, if you want to watch the American, if you want to hear it in English, watch Let Me In. Don't watch the fucking dubbed version of Let Me In or Let the Right One In. I know it gets confusing. It's a beautiful film, man. I can't recommend it enough to people. And I've never heard anyone come back and tell me, hey man, thanks for recommending that. It was a great film. I know, you know what, I'm not sure. I can't remember if I asked Ty Lord if he, if he has this or not. If he doesn't have it, I'm gonna send it to him. All right, moving on. All right, let me show you. I actually spent some money today. You know, I'm always trying to get these great deals, but every once in a while you gotta you don't have to, but I'll spend a little bit of money extra to get something I think is really cool. So I found this at Half Price Books, the Open Water Collection. It's got the three open water films, Open Water, Open Water 2, Adrift. And the third film, Open Water 3, Cage Dive. And, um, you know, you can't get enough shark movies that, you know, good shark... Like, we don't get enough really good shark films. There's a lot of shark films that we love, but we love them because they're so bad that they're good. But Open Water is one of my favorite shark movies of all time. Like, it's a serious shark film like Jaws. And um, it's not as good as Jaws, but what is? But uh, I, I consider it a, a semi-classic when it comes to shark films. And uh, I've actually heard decent stuff about the other two films. So I'm very interested in watching two and three. And I'll be watching them really soon and let you guys know how good they are. And um, I talked about it in the last video, so I won't get into it too much here. But 
basically a tour guide loses track of how many scuba divers are out in the water in the first film and leaves them in the middle of the ocean. So that's terrifying, right? And they actually have pretty decent stories. I don't know about three, but two. I was reading two today that says a luxury yacht cruise goes awry when a group of old high school friends who forget to lower the ladder before enjoying an ocean swim, the boat proves impossible to climb back in, leaving them adrift miles from shore. So that's a pretty good concept. And um, yeah, for $9.99, it actually goes from about $13.99 online. So got a, at least a decent deal on it. And I don't picture this being something I'm gonna find right away at Goodwill. And uh, although it kind of looks like it might be something that Dollar Tree would have, because Dollar Tree does have Shark Collection uh, Blu-rays I've seen before. I actually own one of them and a, at least a couple DVD collections, but not this collection here. And this is what? Summit Lionsgate. I don't know. You never know, but I'm not thinking it's going to be being at your dollar twenty-five store. All right, now, moving on. So also at Half Price Books, and I'm guilty for never seeing this movie. I'm very shocked. I'm a huge fan of William Freakin. Exorcist is one of my favorite movies of all time. He's made all kinds of incredible movies, and let's not forget the, uh, the gay slasher cruising with the gay Al Pacino. But we have a uh, Filmmaker's Signature Series edition that was in the um, clearance section at Half Price Books of The French Connection for five bucks. And it is factory sealed, guys. You know what sold me? I'm, I'm standing there at Half Price Books and I'm like, man, should I make this purchase? It's not really my style with what I'm collecting right now. I'm into cyborg films horror movies kind of cheesy so bad it's good stuff it's maybe too serious for my movie collection you know what sold me on it I was like reading it seeing who was in it and then once I saw that my boy Roy Scheider is in it I was immediately sold man I went right to the register with it Roy Scheider's a man so that's badass Gene Hackman and Roy Scheider William Freak in film. Possibly the greatest car chase scene in the history of movies. So I look forward to checking that out. All right, now. Next up here. What time is it? 325? See, I'm already failing to do what I said I was going to do. All right, so we have Total Recall 2070 Machine Dreams. I started to watch, uh, show this in my last video, but realized that I was going to save it for this video. And so, first of all, first of all, I just want to say that this right here is a the, it's a pilot to a television series, and um, I don't know if what channel it was on and how long the series lasted or, or even if it ever got picked up at all I'm not even sure I didn't do any research on it but I didn't think it had anything to do with the Schwarzenegger Total Recall but I'm actually wrong it's supposed to take place in the same universe that the, the OG uh, Total Recall did so that's pretty badass to find that out after the fact of watching it and um Michael Easton is in this. I don't remember him from too much other stuff, but he does. He has a very uh, Jack Scallion type of performance in this. I'm a big fan of Jack Scalia. And uh, yeah, man, uh, he does a decent job. The Android has an Android in this movie, and it's basically an Android buddy cop movie, or that's what it turns into, uh, with an actor named Carl Pruner. And uh, he's okay, very analytical. You know, as, as most androids or cyborgs are. and um, But they play off of each other pretty well. And, uh, yeah, it's like a... I think it's like a murder mystery, if I remember correctly. A stunning futuristic thriller about a world so high-tech, man is the only flaw. In the year 2070, the planet Earth is ruled by a single government entity 
and a conglomeration of corporations that hold absolute power. The crime rate is virtually non-existent and the Citizens Protection Bureau defends the innocent from unchecked socio-technological, God damn, that's a big word, socio-technological -te forces. But when the Bureau partner of Agent David Hume, who's played by Michael Easton, and uh, is dramatically gunned down, Hume's determination to uncover the dangerous truth behind the shocking crime leads him to a pulse-pounding race through the galaxy. So yeah, there's virtually no crime in this, uh, uh, um, I was about to say, Neptune, not, that's not the right word. Um, I can't think of the word I was gonna say. Well, forget it. Anyway, there's no crime in the future, basically. And um, so when there is a murder, they have to figure out what's going on. And the android gets involved somehow. I can't remember. I watched this weeks back. And I've seen so many movies since then. But uh, you can tell this is a movie, a TV series. Like, when it ended, I was like, wow. This is like the most non-dramatic ending of all time. But if you realize it's a TV series pilot, you realize, oh, they're just going to go on to the next episode. So it kind of threw me for a loop when I was watching it. But once I found out that it was a pilot, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Neptunian? No, Neptunian future? What am I trying to say? Nestopian? Yeah, Nestopian future. I think I was, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, hopefully I did that some kind of justice. All right, next up, found this at Goodwill. You know, growing up when I did, I mean, who didn't love Knight Rider? And you're telling me you're going to give me the best of Knight Riders? Knight Rider on, what is it, nine episodes of, the, of Knight Rider, the best of? I had to pick, up, pick that up for $1.99, guys. I mean, that car, is that a real car? Can I buy this car? Or do they do special shit to this car? So I don't ever remember a car with a red light that went back and forth. I'm sure you can have that done. You can custom make. What kind of car is this? Does it say what kind of car this is? No, I don't think it does. Relive your favorite moments from the hit show that made David Hasselhoff a superstar and his supercar kit an icon. Yeah, and I didn't say what kind of car it is. It looks like an RZ, I don't know, RXZ, an RXZ, no, an RZ, I don't know. Is there a car called RXZ? That's what it looks like. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But yeah, man, everybody loves David Hasselhoff. I mean, the guy sings like shit and somehow goes over to Germany and has like a, a iconic music career and couldn't sell out the fucking mall here in the America singing a song. I mean, for, what, for whatever reason, in Germany, they think this guy is the greatest singer of all time. He's German fools. But anyway, who, who doesn't love David Hasselhoff and... Him eating, him eating cheeseburgers, drunk as fuck, and his daughters recording him, putting him on, uh, putting him on social media. <laughs> the burgers falling apart. And he's like eating it, laying on the floor, drunk as fuck. I love David Hasselhoff. Tyler would say he has a beautiful, studly, hairy chest. Yeah, I'm gonna get back into this. I'm gonna find out what kind of car this is. I want to buy this car before. I before I retire. No, I'm gonna buy this car. No, I don't wanna do that. I'm not gonna retire for decades. I mean, I might not retire till 30 years from now. I Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this car in the next 10 years. That's my goal, that's my ambition in life. All right, that's it. I got goals, Mo, mofo. All right, next up here we have Lovely Bones. I've seen this movie, but 
can't remember how I felt about this movie. It was factory sealed at Goodwill for a couple of bucks. I figured, what the hell, let me pick it up again. I know the killer is very Jeffrey Dahmer-ish, you know, with the glasses, looking all nerdy and shit. And, um, you know, Mark Wahlberg's in this. And I remember it being very, like, uh, dreamlike, and uh, the killer's, like, really creepy. But anyway, this guy's daughter, 14-year-old daughter, gets kidnapped by the serial killer, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, I won't get too much in, too much more into it, but uh, the lovely bones. I'm gonna check it out again. Let you guys know how I feel about it. In the next, I don't know, next. I mean, I don't know. My backlog is insane right now. Gotta stop picking up films. Oh shit! Another buck twenty-five bush movie that I forgot to show you guys. And I don't know, this one kind of, you know, I, I talked about Jack Scalia earlier. And this one kind of grabbed me when I was at Buck 25 Bush. I was like, uh, I read the back of it. It's got some futuristic stuff to it. I'm into futuristic movies right now. And I say, you know what? Let me give it a shot. It's probably going to suck, but uh, silencers. In the frightening futuristic vein of the Matrix. Prepare to meet the men in black, cryptic characters with pale skin and hypnotic black eyes who secretly threaten the lives of those who have witnessed UFOs. But then, but when keeping alien activity a secret is no longer enough, and the creatures begin descending on humans in order to build a portal to invade Earth, it's up to one man, Special Agent Rafferty, to save mankind. Jack Scalia. This movie's gonna suck, isn't it? All right, we'll check it out. We'll see what's going on with it. All right, so let me hurry through this. All right, next movie, you guys know how I love my killer clown movies. Fear of Clowns, the movie cover alone had me at the Goodwill door. I had to grab it, had to pick it up. Or I should say the Goodwill spin rack. And uh, yeah, 2004 killer clown film. Is it that good? No, it's not that good. But we don't get enough killer clown movies, so I have to cherish what I get, guys. And I don't get get much as far as, as far as killer clown films is concerned. I tell you what, there is there's so this the movie's about this artist who paints these creepy clowns, and she paints this clown, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, this clown is like in her neighborhood, like killing people and uh stalking her and all the while she's getting a divorce i think and i can't remember if they're let me see break some windows one's uh, one woman's most terrifying nightmare becomes reality when the painting she makes makes of bloodthirsty clowns begin to manifest themselves as reality Convinced she is imagining the terror, Linda Blodgett continues to paint and tries to overcome her desperate fear of clowns. But when a clown identical to the one in her painting begins to stalk her, killing off those around her, Linda is forced to confront her dead on... Well, that's basically what I just explained. So it explains nothing of what I was trying to get out of it. But anyway, she's getting a divorce, right? And I think they're fighting over the dog, getting the dog for custody. Or maybe it's their kid. I don't remember. I watched so many movies. But um, whatever it is, it's pretty fucking serious because the husband is like, hires a hitman to kill her. So I'm assuming it's kids so, so that he can get the kids, right? So she's got this clown stalking her. People are ending up dead. The police are showing up and I think the detective like is in love with her or whatever. And, uh, and then she meets this other guy, and this, this rich guy who has this nice car. So he's coming around. It's kind of a whodunit. You don't know if it's the, 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 the new guy she met, if it's her husband, if it's the hitman. And, um, but anyway, um, yeah, her husband hires a hitman. And the craziest shit happens in this movie. So 
about midway through the movie, or maybe, no, this is like the, was it the final chapter? But anyway, so, in some part of the movie, she's by herself in the house, and this killer clown, so the hit, so well, first of all, the hitman is sent to basically do the hit, right? And, oh, no, let me, let me take it back real quick. The hitman goes back to the husband and says, you're going to have to pay me some more money. There's a fucking killer clown stalking your wife and the police are everywhere. They're fucking stalking. They're, 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 they're stationed like in the street watching over her house. She's got police protection and you want me to do a hit on this bitch? You're going to have to pay me some more money. So he's like, okay, fine. I'll pay you the more. I'll pay you more money. So the dumb hitman goes to the house and he's like watching the house and stuff, like trying to see the right moment to go in and kill this chick, right? The hitman. And all of a sudden, this random clown, they never explain, is like crossing through the yard and the police jump out and jump on top of the fucking random clown. I don't know if he's walking from a, a, a kid's party or something, but he's not the killer clown. And the, the police are basically trying to handcuff him. They have him on the grass right in front of her fucking house. And all of the sudden, this actually is a fairly decent scene. It's a good de decapitation. All of a sudden, a real clown, this is broad daylight, mind you, comes behind and chops off the cop's head with an ax. And the head flies like on top of a car or some shit. The fucking hitman sees this bullshit going on. He sees police get his head cut off, a clown with no head with handcuffs, and he fucking still goes into the house to make the hit to try to fucking kill the the uh, the uh, the the, uh, the artist lady, the wife. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. But. Um, I don't know. The clown is talking. To the, the clown goes around and he's like saying these like nursery rhymes all the time. And he's like talking to, he's talking to himself all the time. And, and he's, he's talking like he has a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist is trying to help him. I don't know. It's, um, that's not that good to be honest with you. All right. A few more movies here. I'll let you guys go. Four more films to be exact. Oh, I got to get home in. The Astro start at 4 o'clock. All right, let me hurry up here. All right, another pickup from Goodwill here. I fucking hate these cases, man. I'm telling you right now. I cannot stand these style cases. So I am going to try my best. Oh, fuck. The disc flew out and went between the seat. I'm going to try my best to get another case of this. But we have Omega Cop. This is right up my fucking alley, man. So, this has Ron Marchini. Hopefully, I'm saying that right in it. And Ron Marchini is in the Black Belt Hall of Fame. So, he's like a real badass, right? And it also has Adam West, the uh, the, the old original like Batman from the, the black and white uh, TV series, which is pretty funny. He plays like a really big part in this movie. And uh, so it's cool having him in this film. This is like a really, really bad film, but one of those one of those films that's so terrible that there's a lot of fun. It's 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 entertaining. I'll just put it to you that way. And uh, I just found this out. There's actually actually a sequel to this called Karate Cop. So I'm gonna have to search that one down. And it has a cameo appearance by David Carradine, who I fucking love. And um, What's the David Carradine cop movies? It's like, I got to get all these cop movies. An Omega Cop. Of course, we got the Cyborg Cop movies. But then you have the ones that, that David Carradine's in that I just showed you guys in previous videos. The two films, the uh, the original and the sequel. I can't think of it right now. But, uh, but definitely, I'm going to pick up Karate Cop. Actually, the bad guy in this film, the baddie, is pretty... pretty pretty evil looking fucking character man he's not bad at all he, he plays the role pretty good and um it says it in the not too distant future the world has been overrun with criminals 
who now hold the power over the well intentioned authority figures. Only a small handful of people are willing to stand up and fight for justice. This small band of police officers is led by martial arts legend Ron Marcini, or Marcini, Marcini, I don't know how to say his name, the Omega Cop. With a small band of officers dying all around him, Marcini must, be, must, must become a one-man army and take on scores of criminals on his own. This is a pretty cool film, man. Lots of like practical effects and stuff, good fight sequences and shit. It has shitty acting in it. What do you expect? I mean, it's a uh, it's a fun film, man. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I picked this up at Goodwill. I don't remember being like a huge fan of this when I saw the movie. It definitely runs too long. It's like over two hours. This movie. But I am a really big fan of the Alien movies, and I don't know how many films Ridley Scott had to do with except for the first movie, right? Ridley Scott was the first film, and then the second film was, um, who did the, who did Aliens? Aliens was done by, I'm just, I'm like, I cannot pull a fucking thought together today. Not the guy who did the Transformer films. Who did that? Who did Aliens? What does it even matter? Okay, uh, Ridley Scott, I don't think he did Aliens 2, 3, 4. So it's cool to see him come back for, for uh, Prometheus. I think Prometheus is the... Um, comes before the Alien, if I remember correctly, the Alien films. It's a prequel to that. Journey deeper into the world of Prometheus with seven hours of extras. Yeah, there's a lot to this, man. You know, for a dollar ninety-nine, this is a cool little set. It's got the 3D Blu-ray in it. It's got the regular Blu-ray, and then it's got special features disc, and then it's got a digital copy disc as well. So four disc set for uh, two bucks. A Prometheus. Not bad. I'll check that out again. I remember it being creepy. That Prometheus character is like, like a badass, man. All right, something from my childhood here, man. What are we at? I think it's like 42 minutes. I, I could never do a 30 minute fucking video. All right, next up here we have Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I remember it like it was yesterday. Watching the previews to this film. One of the scenes they would show in the previews when I was a kid was the scene where he's... I, don't, I can't remember the context, but he's like riding down the street on this goofy, nerdy bicycle. And he's like... Ee! And, uh, like, I think he's, like, passing some cool, some pretty chicks and stuff, right? If I remember correctly. And all of a sudden, he fucking, like, crashes the bike and flies over the handlebars and into the grass. And he, like, rolls over and jumps up and starts walking. And he says, I meant to do that. And I just thought, I remember fall, I remember rolling on the carpet crying laughing with my parents on the couch they're like you're a weird kid i thought it was the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life and uh the it's right there the bicycle scene right there i and it's, it's like it's the dumbest scene but at the same time it just it had me rolling this is actually a good film man and i think the other movie he had what big top there was like two films they're actually really enjoyable movies you know Obviously, this the you know the spawn from the um, Pee Wee's Playhouse, and he's mostly known now for jacking off in like a a triple X theater and shit. But I mean, you know, when it, we got to forget about that. You know, that was I'm sure that was like uh, pre blow when he was in Johnny Depp. That was like pre blow, but uh, or it happened before that he was in the Blow movie. So I, I remember seeing him in the Blow movie, and I was like. Wow, I haven't seen him since I heard he jacked off in a triple uh, X theater. But um, I'm sure he did some other stuff. But he kind of 
he definitely fell into obscurity after uh, after that happened. He was hilarious, man. He was really good in these movies. Like, I really look forward to watching these again. There's a lot of cameo appearances in these movies as well. A lot of fun. Hey, man, this was directed by Tim Burton. I forgot about that. I don't know if the other one was directed by Tim Burton, but yeah, man. This has got Elizabeth Daly, Mark Holton. D I, don't, I don't recognize any of the actors. One of these films had some really cool cameos. Like, I think wrestlers and all kinds of motherfuckers are in these movies. All right. All right, last but not least. Happy to find this at a Goodwill, man. I needed a physical copy of this, man. This is one of the best 2000 horror films. So for $1.99, I got Audition finally for the collection. And uh, this film came out in 2002. And this is a um, Takashi Miki film. He did one of the best uh, Masters of Horror films. I can't remember the name of it right now. But he, he did one of the best stories on that. And he's done a lot of good movies. He's a uh, acclaimed director. And... Um, yeah, this is a cool film. Kevin Thomas, Los Angeles Times, goes even further than the films of Italy. Escru excruciatingly macabre. Can't read it. Labels in the way. Dario Argento. Yeah, man, this is a... Um, basically, well, the synopsis basically tells you everything. Let me read the synopsis. A middle-aged widower, widower is urged... This guy, widower is urged by his teenage son and a film producer friend to start dating again. They devise a plan to hold a phony film audition. Isn't that like the, the synopsis of every porn movie? But anyway, um, to meet new women. The widower falls for a beautiful ballerina with a suspicious past, and their courtship veers from polite romance to psycho nightmare. Yeah, man. So this chick, this lady right here, she does a hell of a job. In the beginning of the movie, you see like, she's just like, she's fucking evil, man. And there's like this potato sack, like in the middle of her apartment that starts moving on the ground. You're like, what the fuck is that shit? And then she has some guy inside of it and she's feeding him throw up in a dog bowl. The guy's actually eating throw up out the dog bowl, and you're like, wow, this movie's fucking crazy. And um, anybody that's in like maintenance or in like plumbing will know what PVC wire is. And it's also called PVC string. And it has like um, these plastic like um, things you can put your fingers in, right? And um, or, or you can just wrap it up or whatever. But anyway, you can cut like PVC pipe with it. But it's like wire. It's like string. And uh, let me just put it to you this way. She uses that PVC string on somebody. And it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, misses the 2000 curse. Again, 2002 film. And uh, the reason why you watch 2000 films. Because you can't overlook them. Because you might find a gem like this on Audition. Check it out. Really cool shit, guys. All right, break a window. That's it. Thanks for checking out the video. I got to watch the Houston Astros kick some Yankee ass. If you're a Yankee fan, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for your mother. And, uh, yeah, half man, half machine. I am the physical media Mac. The PWM. Good luck finding whatever physical media that you're looking for. And I will catch you guys in the next video.